everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about classifications of receptors. And if you have not watched the divisions of the nervous system video from Bio253, please go back and take a look at it. So in that video, we talked about the different divisions of the PNS and the CNS. And we talked about how sensory neurons bring in information from the PNS to the CNS. And depending on what type of information, it's going to be carried on a different type of structural neuron. Unipolar neurons are going to be carrying information on your somatic senses, your skin, your body, or your body position. Bipolar neurons are going to carry information about your special senses, about what you're seeing, hearing, tasting, or smelling. And these are called afferent neurons. Once the information gets into the CNS, we need to perform integration and analysis. Sensation is the detection of the stimuli by the CNS. Perception is the recognition and analysis of those sensations. Sensation is receiving the information on something that's small, round, red, sitting on my desk, pretty juicy. Perception is the analysis and recognition of those characteristics, meaning that that object is an apple. Some of these sensations are going to be conscious sensations. For example, touch, pain, sense of smell. Those are all conscious sensations that you kind of know about when you're experiencing them. We also have unconscious sensation. Unconscious sensation are things like your heart rate, your blood pressure, your glucose levels. Those are all constantly monitored, but you're not really thinking about them. You're not conscious of that sensation. In order for any action to potential to be sent, the neuron must undergo transduction. Transduction is a fancy word for something we've already learned about. Transduction is the conversion of a stimulus into a graded potential. Once we have graded potentials, we can have inhibitory ones or excitatory ones. If there are enough excitatory potentials generated by transduction, an action potential will be sent. Without transduction, none of this will happen. Up until now, we have learned about our afferent sensory neurons in a very general manner. We did talk about the structure of the neuron itself, whether it was a unipolar neuron or bipolar neuron. But remember, all of the sensations in your body have to be carried on neurons. And so we can classify them in a number of different ways. The first way we're gonna learn about is the structural classification based on the structure of the receptor part of the neuron. Remember, whenever we classify something by structure, we're classifying it based on how it looks. There are three different types of structures for our receptors. The first one is called free nerve endings. So if we have the PNS on this side, and the CNS on that side, a receptor that has the structure of free nerve endings basically just has its dendrites hanging out here in the PNS. Its terminal end over here in the CNS, here's the cell body. The types of sensations that would stimulate a free nerve ending receptor would be pain, tickle, temperature, itch, and some types of touch. The second structural type of receptor is something called an encapsulated receptor. Again, we have the PNS over here on the left and the CNS over here on the right. And instead of having a free nerve ending that's just sort of hanging out there, in an encapsulated receptor, the dendrites of the neuron are encapsulated in a connective tissue capsule. We have our axon, we have our cell body, we have our terminal end down here. The stimuli that will activate an encapsulated receptor are things like pressure, vibration, 
and some types of touch. Our third type of receptor is called a sensory receptor. Now sensory receptors are a little bit different. Each of these, the neuron itself has a special receptor at the end. In sensory receptors, we actually have a separate cell that's gonna be our receptor. So this cell right here is the receptor. And then over here is our neuron. And the reason I've drawn it like this as a bipolar neuron is because things like sight, sound, taste, are stimulated in this manner with a receptor cell. So the sensory receptors are actually two separate cells. Well, how does the receptor signal the neuron? Well, we've already learned about neurotransmitters. The sensory receptor is going to release neurotransmitters to activate our neuron. Now, the important thing to remember is that the receptors don't decide what the sensation is and send a specific action potential. The sensation of pain would normally activate a free nerve ending type of receptor. However, this particular receptor might actually be a temperature receptor, in which case the pain would not activate the free nerve endings on this neuron. Likewise, if you were feeling something cold and this was a pain receptor, that temperature would not activate free nerve ending receptor. This idea that each receptor only responds to its particular activator is called a sensory modality. We're gonna come back to this in a few minutes. We're gonna switch over to the computer for a little while here because there's not much to draw. So the first way of classifying receptors is by their structure. The second classification of receptors is by where they are and where the stimuli is coming from, so the origin of the stimuli. Extraceptors are located near the surface of the body and their job is to detect stimulus coming from outside. So examples of this would be temperature receptors in the skin or photoreceptors in the eyes. Those are both extraceptors because they are near the surface and because they're detecting things from outside. Interoceptors, also sometimes called visceroceptors, are located in places like your blood vessels, your visceral organs, your muscles, your nervous system. These detect stimuli from inside the body. Many times these are not consciously perceived, things like blood pressure and CO2 levels, but sometimes they can be consciously perceived, things like pain receptors or stretch receptors when your stomach is full. Proprioceptors are a special type of introceptor that helps us determine our body's position in space. Notice that all three of these receptors don't have a re in them. So for example, it's an extraceptor, not an extroreceptor. Our third way of classification of receptors is by the type of stimuli that activates it. So mechanoreceptors are activated by physical movement. Things like stretch, vibration, or bending of the receptor. Examples of mechanoreceptors would be proprioceptors baroreceptors, and our hearing receptors. Our second type of receptor would be a chemoreceptor, and these are activated by binding to chemicals. Chemicals could be things like carbon dioxide, various ions like calcium or sodium, glucose, etc. A couple of examples of chemoreceptors would be our pain receptors called nociceptors, as well as our osmoreceptors that measure the water and salt balance in the body. A third type of receptor would be a thermoreceptor, which respond to heat or cold. 
And the last type are photoreceptors, and these respond to light energy. So we already talked about modality, which is the type of sensation carried on a neuron. To give a little bit more information about that, what I was trying to get across is that a thermoreceptor that's going to be activated by temperature is not going to be able to bind to chemicals and convey information about the levels of CO2 or sodium in the body. All of these types of receptors exhibit varying levels of adaptation. Adaptation means that after a little while, perception of the sensation goes away. So when you first walk into the fish market, it smells very fishy. However, after a few minutes, you don't notice that smell anymore. There are two ways that you can adapt. Some are rapid adapting. These would be your sense of touch, pressure, and smell. You might feel uncomfortable putting on your clothes first thing in the morning, but very quickly your sense of touch and pressure adapts to the feeling of the clothes on your body. Some receptors adapt very slowly, if at all. Those would be receptors that deal with pain, body position, and your sense of taste. Let's go a little bit more in depth about these receptors based on the type of stimuli. So mechanoreceptors are activated by physical movement, movement such as stretching or bending or vibration of the receptor. This type of receptor is often activated by your tactile senses. These are the senses of touch, pressure, vibration, itch, and tickle. However, they're not the only senses that utilize mechanoreceptors. Your sense of hearing is picked up by a mechanoreceptor. If you recall, proprioception is knowing your body's position in space, and those receptors that help determine our body position are called proprioceptors. Proprioceptors are a specialized type of mechanoreceptor because they are activated by physical movement of the receptor. The receptors are embedded in your muscles and tendons, your synovial joints, and your inner ear. They allow coordinated movement, such as being able to touch your nose without missing. Under normal circumstances, proprioceptors exhibit very little adaptation. However, intoxication by drugs or alcohol can mess with this system, which is why standing on one leg to test your balance or having you touch your nose with your eyes closed is a classic drunk driving screening test used by the police. There are three types of proprioceptors in the body. The first type are muscle spindle fibers. They are within the connective tissue of the muscle fiber. Overstretching of these fibers activates your stretch reflex, which shortens the muscle. The second type are tendon organ capsules and are within the tendons of the muscle. If the force is too high, it will activate the tendon reflex, which causes the relaxation of the muscle and prevents damage. Joint receptors are found in the synovial capsule. They detect stretch and compression of the synovial joints. These three types of proprioceptors send information to the cerebral cortex and comparing the stretch or compression from one part of the body to the other part of the body can help your brain determine if you are standing upright or slightly leaning over on a slope. Other proprioceptors are located in the inner ear and help with equilibrium and balance. We'll be covering these in the chapter on special senses. Chemoreceptors bind to chemicals and send an action potential when the specific chemical is bound. Examples of stimuli that utilize chemoreceptors are the measurement of carbon dioxide levels, ions, and other chemicals, as well as pain receptors. Pain receptors are called nociceptors. What we perceive as pain is actually cell or tissue damage due to extreme chemical, mechanical, or thermal events. Special chemicals called prostaglandins are released by damaged cells. Our perception of that pain is protective. It is supposed to lead us to stop doing the harmful thing. Nociceptors exhibit almost no adaptation. 
There are two types of pain, fast and slow. Fast pain is sharp. It's carried on myelinated fibers, and it's mostly cutaneous pain. An example of fast pain would be a knife cut on your skin. Slow or chronic pain is slower. It's carried on unmyelinated fibers, and it can take some time to feel, up to one to two seconds. This is usually felt in deeper tissues. An example of slow or chronic pain would be a toothache. One type of chronic pain is referred pain. This is when the pain seems to come from somewhere else in the body. A classic example of referred pain is the pain felt in your left arm when you have a heart attack. Although the heart is the part that's damaged, the pain can be felt all the way down the left arm due to the shared pathways of the spinal nerves. Thanks to modern medicine, we have a couple of ways to relieve pain. Analgesics, such as Advil or aspirin, block the formation of prostaglandins. Because the prostaglandins are not made, they cannot be released and bind to nociceptors. A local nerve block, such as Novocaine, blocks the conduction of the action potential along sensory neurons. So although prostaglandins are released and cause an action potential, the conduction of that action potential does not reach the terminal end. Opiates like codeine or morphine change your perception of the pain. So the pain is still perceived, but it seems less bad. One interesting type of pain is phantom limb pain. There are two reasons for phantom limb pain. The first one is that the receptor from that missing limb can become activated and send action potentials. And the cerebral cortex receives the action potential and thinks the limb is still there and is in pain. The second reason for phantom limb pain is that the cerebral cortex gets reorganized in some way and responds to signals from another part of the body but thinks they're coming from the missing limb. There are two different types of thermal receptors, cold receptors and warm receptors. They respond to a relatively moderate range of temperatures. You have many more cold receptors in your body than you do warm receptors. And the greatest concentration of all of these thermal receptors are found in the face and the ears. Thermal receptors are generally free nerve endings. Cold receptors are found in the stratum basal, and warm receptors are found in the dermis. They are rapidly adapting receptors, which is why a warm shower seems really hot and then tends to not feel so hot after a few minutes. Intense hot or cold stimuli outside of this range trigger nociceptors due to the damage from extreme temperature. As a review, go ahead and put the video on pause and try to match the modality to the receptor. Hopefully you got these answers. That's it for today. See you in class.